everyone, it's Brittany. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day two of Halloween. Today's video is a really cool DIY and it's probably my favorite DIY I've ever done and it is a custom doormat that says Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is my favorite Halloween movie so I thought it was the perfect saying to have on my doormat for Halloween. But since this is customizable, you can put whatever you want on it. It could be a picture or just any other phrase that you want it's super easy. A lot of tutorials showing you how to make a custom doormat use a thing called like a silhouette. It like cuts out stencils and stuff and I don't have one so I wanted to show you how I made my own. Before we get started make sure you are subscribed to my channel. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button below this video. I am doing five videos this week Monday to Friday. They are all going to be Halloween themed so make sure you are subscribed so that you can catch all of them and let's go ahead and get started with this one. So obviously the major thing that you're going to need is a doormat. I got my doormat from Ikea. It is a coconut fiber doormat. I think they also go by cocoa something or cocoa hair. I don't know, but as long as you say something like coconut fiber when you're looking for one, then most likely you're going to find it. You will also need to pick a font that you want. You can go online, you can find free fonts, or you can just use one that you already have on your computer. And the first thing you will want to do is figure out a size for whatever saying that you will have on your doormat. So depending on your font, that might change. I think I ended up with 550 size font for uh, the one that I used, but obviously that could change for whatever you guys decide to use. I would also suggest printing out one page with a letter on it to see if that size is going to work for your doormat instead of printing out all of the letters because it might be wrong and then you will waste a lot of paper. So I figured out what size I want and then I ended up turning my font into an outline. You can do that, at least I know for sure, in pages on Max, and that's just gonna save you a lot of ink. I also changed it to a gray color so that I wasn't using a ton of black ink or just ink in general. So if you want to save on ink, then definitely do that before you print them out. Since my phrase is Hocus Pocus, the same letters are in Hocus Pocus. The only thing that changes is the H and the P. So I decided to print out one big H and one big P and then O-C-U-S just so that I didn't have to waste even more paper. Once you have all of your letters printed out, you will want to cut out each of the letters. You can use an exacto knife for this. I found scissors worked perfectly fine and you will need an exacto knife for the actual stencil part of it but for now scissors should work fine. Just make sure that you're cutting out all of the insides of everything like the inside of the O or the little details. If your font has any details like little mini swirls or something like that just make sure that you cut out just the letter itself. Now to make the actual stencil you will need some contact paper which is basically just sticky paper and I got mine from the dollar store. Definitely check dollar stores for craft supplies like this because you can usually find them and they will be super cheap. So I just got plain white contact paper and I laid it out to the size of the mat just to make sure that it was going to fit and it was totally perfect. So I just laid it out on a surface that I would be cutting on eventually and I laid out the letters that I cut out as well. So you can use a ruler or something straight just to make sure that your letters will be straight and also even on your stencil so that they aren't totally off center or something. Mine wasn't completely perfect, but I still liked how it turned out anyway, so don't worry about that too much. So what you wanna do is just set out the letters just how you want them to be on your doormat onto the contact paper and then trace those letters onto the contact paper. Obviously, you will be wanting to trace the insides of everything again, like the inside of the O and the details on any font that you might have that you're using. You can also draw lines on the contact paper to make it a little bit easier making sure that all of your letters are even and you're not going to be seeing this at all because this is just on the stencil. So do whatever you need to do just to make everything even. So once you have all of your letters traced out onto the contact paper, you will need to have an X-Acto knife to cut out all of the letters in your stencil. And make sure you're doing this on a surface that is okay to be cutting on because you will be cutting directly 
through the contact paper. I use a little cutting board mat, basically. I got it from one dollar store, I'm pretty sure, but I know you can get them from places like Michael's or any other craft stores, and this is just gonna protect any surface that you might be cutting on. Obviously, be very careful when you're doing this. If you feel more comfortable having somebody else cut it for you, that is totally cool too, as long as they are also very careful. But you want to cut out all of the details within the stencil itself, but for the things like the inside of the O, which I keep mentioning, when you cut those out of the stencil, you want to keep them because this is what is going to be the stopper for paint on the actual doormat. So you want something there to make sure that you have an O instead of a big dark circle. <laughs> so just make sure you are saving all of the little pieces that you cut out of the contact paper because you will be sticking them to the doormat. So once you have everything cut out of your contact paper this is going to be the main part of your stencil so go somewhere that you will be painting on especially if you don't want paint to go everywhere because it could end up being messy it really wasn't too bad for me I just made sure to be very careful and I was painting outside but one thing that I do want to mention that is super important and that is to make sure the letters on your stencil are facing the right way on your mat when you set your stencil down I did not do this in the video at first until it was brought to my attention that I had it backwards from the way that doormats basically should be read. So before you start painting, just make sure that you have your stencil sat down in the right position. Anyways, to do that, you will want to set your contact paper onto your doormat, and contact paper has a backing that needs to be peeled off, so go ahead and peel that off and set it down where you want it to go. This isn't really going to stick very well, so if you make a mistake, it's okay. You can definitely move it, but once you have it exactly centered, you can also measure this out just to make sure that it works well and everything is even, you will want to use some like duct tape or maybe painting tape or something to just make sure that the sides are taped down to the actual doormat so that your stencil doesn't move around while you're painting because that would really suck. The other thing I decided to do was use little sewing pins to pin down all of the stencils, especially close to where the actual letter will be and all of the little pieces inside, like the inside of the P or the inside of the O and little details so that those don't move around on their own as well. The sewing pins made a huge difference. I am so glad that I decided to use those because it held everything so well. Everything was very secure while I was painting it. And then for paint, I used some black acrylic paint that I got from Walmart. It was pretty inexpensive and I read the back. It said that it was weather resistant so that will probably be perfectly fine for a doormat. So I started painting with a sponge brush thing which was working okay but I felt like I needed to use so much paint to get it to the actual darkness that I wanted it to be. So I ended up switching eventually to a brush which worked way better because the bristles were able to get into the fibers and kind of paint the sides of those fibers and it made it look very solid and dark. So I would just suggest starting with a paintbrush from the beginning. It goes a lot faster and it works way better. I just used basically like dabbing motions with the brush. I was kind of like stabbing it with it, which was like pretty aggressive, but it worked really well and really quickly. And you really don't have to worry about the paint bleeding out into the other parts of the doormat. I'm not really sure why. I think it's just because the fibers are so stiff. They really hold where they need to be. So you get very crisp lines at the end. So I let mine dry for a little while. You will probably want to let it dry at least overnight before you actually put it outside and I was so happy with how it turned out. I think it looks incredible. I'm pretty sure it looks like something that you could buy at a store but it's so cool knowing that you could do it yourself and if you wanted to you could put like your initials on it or your name or something and just do whatever you want. Just have fun with it. That's the most amazing part about these DIYs is you can make it however you want. I hope that you guys liked how it turned out and let me know in the comments below what you would put on your doormat if you decide to make one. And also give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. I would really appreciate it and also helps me with knowing what types of videos that you guys like. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button below this video. I have three more days of Halloween and there will be cool DIYs, costumes and just like fun Halloween things. So I hope that you guys stick around to watch those videos and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!